Hey everyone, it's Kim, the Homeschooling Grammy, and today I am going to give you a look inside learning language arts through literature, the yellow book. So if you're interested, stick around and we'll get started. Let's get started so as you can see this is the yellow book and so they come in you know each color has a like level um, and so we're using yellow this year for third grade um, and it covers spelling vocabulary grammar reading penmanship creative writing higher order and thinking skills and so we also have a writing curriculum I also use writing with ease so we don't do all of the writing or the creative writing portion in this book because we have a separate writing curriculum. Um, and I don't want to overwhelm her. She already is not crazy about writing. So um, sometimes we skip through that kind of stuff. So this is actually the yellow teacher book. Um, and the reason I'm showing you the teacher's manual is because really it's just a carbon copy of the student workbook. And I didn't want to show you all of Hope's work. So here you go. Here's the introduction. So here you go. Here, This will give you an idea. So le learning language arts through literature, the series. So the blue book is for first grade, red, second, yellow, third, etc., etc., etc. And it goes all the way up to high school skills. So there's the gold book, world literature. There's the gold book, American literature. And there's gold book, British literature. So it... it's good all the way through from first through 12th grade, which is awesome. There's a introduction here at the front of the book telling about their beliefs and uh, integrated language approach etc etc it tells you how to use the book so there's 36 numbered lessons each lesson is divided into five days and the average time for one lesson is five days and at the completion of 36 lessons your student will accomplish 180 days of work so it tells you like grammar, reading skills, just goes into more specifics, spelling, higher order thinking, creative writing, and journal entry. And the journal entry begins in lesson seven. It also covers handwriting and there's some review activities. There's also assessments, of course the appendix and the enrichment answers, etc. And materials that you may need to use, um, which is the student activity book or a loose leaf notebook. So you don't really need the student activity book. I like it because I just like something to have her to write in, except, you know, besides her notebook, and it just makes it nice. I really like the student workbook. Okay, but it's not necessary. You can use this curriculum without it. So here you go, here's the table of consent, contents, and like lesson one, everyday words, and the tale of Benjamin Bunny. And so there's all kinds of literature and passages that you read together, or you can have your student read. Most of the time she does the reading in this. Um, with our writing with ease, I do the reading. Um, it's an entirely different kind of program, but she usually reads the little lessons or the little like um, passages in this book. And as you can see, it goes all the way through to lesson 36. All right. So everyday words. So this is what's going to happen in lesson one. So it kind of gives you an overview. Lesson one, everyday words. Here are the skills that are going to be covered, base of root words, capitalization, compound words, nouns, periods, proper nouns, comprehension, synonyms, telling sentences, cause and effect, alphabetical order, thesaurus, suffixes, and vocabulary. So that is what you're going to be covering in lesson one. So here's your example. So over here is all of your teacher's notes. They're on the left and the right side. As you can see, they're over here as well. And there will also be answers to some of the questions. So here's an example at the top. Here is the first passage that your child will read. And I have her read this. 
Um, that wood was full of rabbit holes. In the neatest, sandiest hole of all lived Benjamin's aunt and his cousins Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail, and Peter. Mrs. Rabbit earned her living by knitting rabbit wool mittens and scarves. So day one, you're going to listen to your teacher. Listen as your teacher reads a literature passage. So in this case, you're going to have your you're going to read to your child. Um, copy the sentences, and then compare your copy to the literature passage and make corrections. So copy work. I love copy work. Um, and then in B, it says there are three periods in this passage. Circle each one. There are four commas in this passage. Draw a square around each one. And when you're reading a passage, stop when you see a period and pause when you see a comma. Read the passage to your teacher, paying attention to periods and commas. And so here are the spelling words for the week. And we have our own separate spelling curriculum. Now, what I do have her do, we like, I don't test her on these spelling words, but I do have her write them when they ask for them to be written. And even on the day that they have a supposed test, um, I try to see what she knows or she just writes them, copies them. So here it says, see, copy the spelling words from Focus on Spelling and say the words aloud as you write them. And notice that these words spell the N with the sound, the N sound with K-N. And then there's optional enrichment. So each one of these has optional enrichment. So it's just a little extra something that your student can do that are in the student workbooks. Um, and I usually have her do them unless there's something really off the wall. And then it goes on to day two. But you see the lessons are fairly short and sweet. So they don't take a whole lot of time. And then you move on to day three. which comes over to this page. And then, of course, it'll review the phonics facts. K-N at the beginning of a word says N as an N. And you'll look at the list of words. So you'll see each, each word remembering what the K-N makes in each of these words. Use the words to fill in the blanks for these sentences. Practice your spelling words. Talks about punctuation. And then here, here's an example where you can have your student either correct these orally or in writing. And I, you know, we go back and forth. Sometimes we do it in writing and sometimes not. So they need to go, go into each sentence, put in the correct punctuation and capitalization. Um, then you choose a book that you'd like to read, show your teacher at least two spelling, telling sentences, take your spelling pretest. Um, Look at the passage from day one. How did Benjamin find his aunt's rabbit hole in the wood filled with rabbit holes? Use your imagination to read three sentences describing Mrs. Rabbit's home. You may include information about her children and her work. Take your spelling, spelling test. You can do the optional enrichment. And then there's also handwriting. So cursive is introduced in this book. and I, So I will go ahead a little bit in this so you can get an idea. Because we've been doing cursive. And Hope was so excited to do cursive this year. Like, she could not wait to do cursive. So here we go. I think it started in this lesson. Lesson 13, I do believe. Or was I wrong? Did I tell a fib? No. Here we go. So here we go. Here we start with cursive. And I like this cursive because it actually starts at the bottom of the line instead of it starting like up here so that they learn much more easily to connect their letters. So I really like that about this handwriting. So you can see there's handwriting. And let me see. We are, we are quite a ways up here. I'll give you an idea as we go through. Oh. You know what I want to show you? And this is the thing that we tend to skip. We have been skipping these chapters because, or these lessons, um, because we do writing with ease. And I don't feel that that is necessary. It's kind of like overkill. So we do a lot of passage reading and we do exactly the same kind of thing that is going on in this book. Um, but writing with ease really hones in on writing more where this is just like once in a while. Um, so you'll have a whole literature link, and this one is The Courage of Sarah Noble. Um, there's a summary of this literature link here, 
And then there will also be another story over here, Young Daniel, Boy of the Woods, to read. And on day two, after you did got done reading that, finish reading the book or story from yesterday. And when it is completed, discuss it with your teacher using these questions for comprehension questions. So why was Sarah making the journey to New Milford with her father? What was her mother's advice to her as she left? Um, and then there's also discussion questions for young Daniel over here as well. Um, so, you know, it's really awesome. And like I said, we tend to skip this part because writing with ease covers these kinds of passages in depth. And I don't want to overwhelm her with too much writing. So it goes all the way to day five again. And then there's like a little assessment, an I can assessment literature link on Frontier Life. So after the literature link on Frontier Life is completed, check if I can objective with your teacher. C, I can complete my work. I can be creative. A, I can be accurate. I can do my work with good attitude. And I can do my work neatly. So I'll give you an idea of how it ends at the end of the book. Like the last lesson. So when you get to lesson 36, once again, you're going to have your little passage or a poem that you're going to read this day on the second day they're working on verbs showing past tense by adding ed um, you're also going to tell about um, actions happening now present tense like slept and sleep gave and give match the following verbs with the irregular past tenses play a verb matchup game um, Small words that come before nouns, and they tell us what a noun is coming. A, an, and the are called part articles. Um, and circle the A and the and in the poem, and these words tell you that a noun is coming. Write the article that comes before oak in your story. And then you can look at this list and see if you can think of a rule that might tell you when to use A and when to use an. So write A or an in each blank. And then on day four, we have learned much wisdom, wisdom about being wise and foolishness from this week's poem. What do you think makes this owl wise? <clears throat> and it'll even give you like re little reminders over on the side, little notes for the teacher. Like here, it tells you, remind your student that sometimes an article and a noun is separated by one or more adjectives. So it could be a big shiny car. So uh is there and the noun is car but you have two adject adjectives in between the article and noun and here's the handwriting as you can see writing full words at this point by the time you hit the end of this book in lesson 36 And then there's review activities. And you choose the skills that your student needs. So in other words, if you go through these and you say, well, you know, my student had no problem with syllables, so there's really no reason to, to do this part of the review activity. So you go ahead and you pick and choose all of these activities that you think that your child may still need work on and go over them again. And then there's assessment on the back, and the assessment 8 is for lessons 33 through 36. And in this final assessment, they're saying add quotation marks to these sentences, um, replace underlined words with pronouns, what, write the past tense of these verbs, and show that the action already happened, and write the articles A or AN in the blanks. And then there's a bunch of um, extra writing practice there's an extra writing practice page in the back, and this can be photocopied for extra writing practice. So it tells you right here on the bottom that you're allowed to photocopy it so that you have extra writing practice. And then, of course, we have your appendix where it has your enrichment answers, your skills index, your punctuation pointers, grammar guides, phonics facts, using your tools, focusing on writing, and bibliography. 
So it gives you all the answers to the, all the enrichment questions here in the back, because for whatever reason they didn't put them, <clears throat> they didn't excuse me, they didn't put them in with the lessons, where all the other answers are actually in with the lessons. So there you have it. That is learning language arts through literature, the yellow book. That's all I have for you today. Learning language, arts through literature, the yellow book. <laughs> I forgot that fast. So I hope that this was a blessing to you. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask me down in the comments and I will talk to you again soon. God bless.